Hello, this is Tyler Crone with the 36 District Democrats. We're delighted this evening to have Janae Ray with us to interview for school board director position two. Over to you, Janae, to introduce yourself and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Janae Ray, and I'm running for Seattle School Board District 2, and I'm the current PTSA president of McClure Middle School. And I'm the mom of three kids in SPS, and I have an MBA. With this MBA, I've managed staff, I've managed budgets, and large projects. And I'm currently a small business owner helping uh, families and others discover generational wealth through home ownership. As president of McClure PTSA, I am able to combine my drive for community with my background in business to help support teachers, students, and parents. I'm running for school board director because I would like to continue the work I've been doing on a larger scale to help more people. I was a member of the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 399, for 10 years. And I am firmly in support of working people's rights to organize and collective bargain. I will definitely be standing with the teachers. Finally, my um, faith and lived experience has given me my drive and passion to give back to the community. Although my political career is just starting, I am confident that I will have the knowledge to help make a difference on the school board. The drive to do hard work and skin in the game because my kids attend the schools. And I would be honored to have your support. The first question this evening will be asked by Laura Marie. Hi, Janae. Um, as a school board director, name some issues or situations where you feel you can make a difference and share an example from your own life where you've applied the specific skills toward an outcome. We're wanting to learn more about your vision, what your strategic approach would be, and what unique strengths you would bring to the role. Okay. I want to bring my lived experience as a mom, a Black mother, a former labor union member, business person and PTSA president to help ensure that all students get a world-class education. I wanna address some of the issues such as the budget crisis, eliminating redlining and hunger, enhancing education and reducing the carbon footprint. Fully funded schools uh, by I wanna fully fund schools by lifting the levy lid and lowering the bond and levy passage thresholds to a simple majority. I worked inside an oil refinery for 10 years. I've seen how dangerous it is for the environment. And I'm trying to improve the educational environment along with the world our kids are growing up in. I wanna use my background to help devise ways that SPS can be a good steward of our environment in such a way that it ensures marginalized communities are cared for first. For example, I would support changing SPS bus fleet to all electric in South Seattle schools first. Thank you. The next prepared question this evening will be asked by Shep. Enrollment in SPS has declined since 2020. What steps would you take to reverse this decline? Well, first we need to figure out why students and parents are choosing to disenroll. Is it because the cost of housing in Seattle has become unattainable for most working families? Is it because parents feel their kids aren't getting a great education or aren't safe? Is it because COVID-19 pandemic made parents feel that kids needed 
different opportunities for engagement? I don't know the answers for any of these questions, but importantly, neither does SPS. So the first thing we need to do is answer these questions. That said, as a mom and PTSA president, I can tell you that the specter of budget cuts and school closures makes me nervous for the type of educations kids are gonna be getting. I wanna make sure that we're not cutting programs, but adding to the curriculum. If parents feel their child is getting the best education, social skills building, and working towards a successful life in an area they can afford, SPS will be a hot commodity. Give the parents, teachers, and students what they want. Above standard education, enrichment programs, and activities to help build community. We can achieve all of this. Thank you so much. The third question tonight will be asked by Sherry. Over to you, Sherry. Hi, um, let's see. What is your vision of a well-resourced school and how do you practice equity and inclusion? Okay. <clears throat> a well-resourced school has world-class education, a diverse group of students and teachers and achieving activities that spark curiosity and drive. I also want all public schools in Seattle to have access to all the things, all these things, which I think are necessities to change how we fund education in our community. As PTS president in North Seattle, I see how engaged parents are with volunteering and donating. I hope to work with my fellow directors to find new ways to engage SPS, all of SPS parents, especially those with limited time, limited resources, or limited English proficiency. I practice equity and inclusion every day as a black woman raising black kids in Seattle, in white Seattle. <laughs> I teach my children to be open-minded and listen. And I try to lead by example. Running for office is one of those examples. Creating more opportunities for kids from diverse backgrounds to collaborate can offer different perspectives to tackling common problems and we can build lifelong friendships along the way. Thank you so much. The last prepared question this evening will be asked by Jeremy. Over to you, Jeremy. What are your thoughts on addressing the budget deficit? And if necessary, how would you approach deciding which schools to close? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't believe in school closures. Overcrowding is a problem and not everyone gets the proper education when this happens. Also, let's be real about who has access to the levers of power in this city and country. The students impacted are very likely to look like me. However, as a business person, I recognize the serious budget shortfalls SPS is facing. I'm against closures, but we still may see them. So I think we have to think through how some closures can have the least harmful impact. I believe kids should have an option to be bused to schools in different communities. This may be an eye-opening experience to see how different communities interact and engage. My husband was bused from one end of the city to another, and it changed his outlook on life. If students are bused though, I don't want it to be a situation where black and brown kids are just bused to white schools, leaving the remaining schools in these communities with less funding. 
I want students from all parts of the city, bus to schools throughout the city, not just closest neighboring schools. In our city, all SPS should be quote unquote, good schools. They should all be safe. They should all have exciting clubs and enrichment activities. But this would likely require change in how we fund education. In this state, I would like to work with my fellow directors to lobby to change the law. Change the law to allow permanent lift to levy lids for education and allow greater increases in levy authority. Thank you so much. So now we'll go to follow-ups and these will have one minute for an answer. The first question is from Laura Marie. Hi again. Danae, so much more relaxed the second time around. Um, I have my favorite question for you. And that is, what aspect of this role are you most looking forward to? And what have you discovered that probably a lot of voters don't know about the school board director role? Oh my goodness. Okay. The, what I'm looking forward to is actually getting out there, meeting with parents and making sure everyone shares the same vision of improving the schools that I do. And I want to reach out and help bring the community together. And that's one thing I've been learning since running for this office. I had no idea how much, how much campaigning actually goes into it. And you have to do interviews. I didn't know it was so political. I was like, this is really interesting. But I understand the fight because <laughs> I mean, you get so passionate behind it and you just want the best for everybody. And the only way you can do it is step up and let and be heard. And hopefully you're the voice for all those in your community. And that's what I want to be, the voice for those in my community and beyond. I want to work for all teachers, students, everyone. Jeremy, over to you. Um, you mentioned a big disparity in PTA volunteers between the different um, schools, but I mean, as you also know, there's a big disparity in the money and what the PTAs spend the money on. Um, as I, I mean, I'm sure you've seen like some of the schools spend it on staff and others don't have the funds to do that. How, I mean, how, I mean, I guess you as a, P, as a PTA director, how are you currently addressing um, that those sort of disparities in that role? And how would you do that as a school board director? As a school board director, I would wanna see the money pooled together from all PTSAs. It might be unpopular, but it'll be very necessary because, and I'm not the only one that has feel this way. When I first moved here, people were coming to me saying these things, even before I was a PTA, PTSA president. They were saying, why, why do we have so much here in this community and kids elsewhere do not have it? Why can't we just put all our money together and give whatever we don't use to those so it can be used. And I was like, that is amazing. I love that. So it's not just me saying it, other parents are thinking it too. Thank you. Are there more follow-up questions from our board at this time? Jeremy, back to you. Yeah, I wanna follow up on your answer. Um, you talked about pooling the money together, though. Um, how 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 would you enforce that as a school board? So, I mean, right now the school board is still cashing the checks from these PTAs. Um, like, would it just go into? Well, I guess you tell me. You tell me like how you would. How is the, how is the board you would do that? So you're asking how is the board will we cash checks? Well, no, would, would you, would you, um, like it, it, more than just culture, but is there a way that the board could actually enforce the equal distribution of funding? 
Well, we would need to definitely get everyone together. Um, I'm not sure how the banking mechanism will work, but once, once we get uh, the board in agreement of, it'll be a collaboration. We're gonna have to have all ideas on figuring out how to manage the money and how it's gonna be dispersed. We need a broad agreement and maybe we can have um, offer suggestions to the community, help them get more involved. For example, you can put it out there. Hey, what, what school needs what? Who doesn't have this? And then go from there. But we kind of want to make a balanced playing field. Thank you so much, Janae. This is our last Laura Marie question of the evening. So over to you, Laura Marie, for the last follow-up. So Janae, the current board has adopted the student outcomes focused government. And I am wondering what your thoughts on that are. Laura Marie, your volume's a little funny. Can you try again? Oh man. <laughs> Can you hear me better now? Yes. So I was asking a uh, board has adopted the outcome. Put it in the chat. Try why can you um try one more time or put it in the chat and then I can and then maybe Janae can just read it out loud or I can read it out loud from the chat. Okay. So the question from Laura Marie is to hear your thoughts on student outcome focused government. You mean like uh, student councils? Okay. I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of how this is all working, but um, I would, I would kind of, if I would kind of need more research on this and I would talk with my fellow directors and see what are their thoughts? And then, and after researching and hearing their position and their thoughts, I would come together and talk with other parents and see what are their thoughts. And then I can develop a more educated um, response for that. I'm just focused on student success and um, not just testing. Great, thank you so much, Janae. Let me add. Well, we are so glad that you are here with us this evening. Thank you again. We're going to stop the formal part of the interview and then Jeremy will cover what happens next. So let me just stop the formal part. <laughs>